Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's UDC Library Webinar, Top 3 Tips for Research Efficiency. I am Megan Kowalski. I am the Outreach and Reference Librarian at the UDC Library. And today our session is going to be provided by my colleague, Catherine Meals, the Assessment Librarian at the UDC Library. We will have time at the end for questions, both recorded and unrecorded, but please feel free to put it in the chat. And everyone who registered today will get the recording, so don't feel like you have to scramble to take any notes. So. Thank you for joining us today and take it away, Kathy. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. So this webinar will cover three strategies for efficient research, strong search strategies, research logs, and having one dedicated spot to put your research. And as Megan mentioned at the end, we'll have time for discussion and questions. So first, why is research efficiency important? Um, research is difficult. It can be messy. It's a process of exploration and developing and answering research questions. And usually it requires a lot of different kinds of experimentation, trying different things. So and that takes time. Um, but researchers, faculty and students are busy, busy people, um, juggling classes, research, family responsibilities, caregiving work, and even more, right? Uh, so learning some strategies for being more efficient and organized can really, really help. So the first tip we have is using strong search strategies. Um, I wanted to talk about two in particular. So the first is brainstorming. Uh, so before you begin searching for information, brainstorm several keywords, synonyms, and related ideas that you can use when you're searching. Why should you do this? Um, because there are usually many, many ways to put the concepts we're researching into words. And because searching is an experimental process, um, you will very, very likely end up doing multiple searches when you're looking for information until you find some good matches. Uh, to smooth this process out a little bit and keep you organized, take a few minutes before you begin searching to brainstorm and write down words you might use to search for each of the concepts in your research question. I know it's tempting to just dive in and do searching, um, but this way, when you need to try different things in your searches, you already have several options ready to go. You can write these down by hand or put them in your phone or in a document on your computer, whatever works for your process. The point is just to jot them down somehow. Using strong keywords when you're searching is very important, but there are a couple of other specific tools you can use to make your searches more specific so that you have a narrower, more manageable set of search results to look at. Remember that the more keywords you add in your searches, the more specific your search results will be. But in addition, remember to use quotation marks around the multiple word phrases to make sure that the resource you're searching finds the words in the phrase right next to each other in the order they appear. That can really help narrow down your search results. And don't forget about database filters, such as date and publication type, which make your search results more targeted. So those are great tools to help you narrow down your search results and make your searching much more efficient. Now let's talk about research logs. Um, keeping research logs is a great way to stay organized and on track with your search process. Uh, there are two kinds of research logs I want to mention to help you in your research efficiency. First is a research log for your searches. Um, so in this kind of log, you record what resource you search, such as Academic Search Premier, ProQuest Multiple Database Search, Gale, uh, what you searched for, the terms you used, um, the filters you used, so on and so forth, which sources you think you may want to use, any comments you have on the results of the search, um, and any adjustments you think you need to make on your next search to make it better based on what you found. Um, keeping this kind of log has the advantage of preventing you from duplicating searches you've already done, therefore saving you time. And it also has the benefit of showing how your search evolves over time, right? That is um, the process you went through to find what you need. Um, so the research log is documenting, you know, your growth as a researcher, your journey through this process and what you're learning along the way. And second, a research log for helpful sources that you think you're going to use. Um, this kind of log can include the citation for the source, a summary, notes on how the source will help you answer your research question, and your main ideas. Um, making a log like this encourages you to review your sources in a systematic way, right? You're gathering information about your sources and putting it all together so you can more easily see what you have and more 
and what else you still need to find. And you have similar information, you're pulling similar information about all of the different sources. Uh, so there are a lot of templates for research logs online. Um, we're happy to offer some, but you can try Googling for research log templates. You can make your own. Everybody has their own kind of unique process, right? Um, so you'll find one that works for you. We're happy to provide recommendations. And this last tip is a quick one. Um, put everything related to your research, the sources you're using, your notes, the drafts of your writing in one place. Um, if you do this, you won't waste time trying to track down where you put something, and you can spend a lot more time getting your actual work done. So there's lots of options for where to store your things, but you're probably best off storing things in the cloud, right? So on your UDC OneDrive, on Google Drive, on Dropbox, or something else similar. Couple reasons for that. <clears throat> First, storing things in the cloud means you're going to have access to your resources on multiple devices. So if you find yourself using multiple computers or tablets and so forth to do work, you'll always have access no matter where you are at any particular moment, no matter what device you're using. And second, most cloud storage services also have options for backing up your files so you don't lose anything. Losing what you've got for your work so far is devastating, right? And so most cloud uh, services have those options for backing up to prevent that from happening to you. So that was a super quick top three tips for research efficiency. Um, that is the end of the formal presentation. I can take questions, we can discuss. Um, Megan, you're welcome to join back again. Um, that's That's all the formal presentation. Thank you, Kathy. I know sometimes we always forget there are little things you can do to make your life a lot easier. And so we want to invite anyone in attendance today to either ask questions about this or other research tips, or if you have found a research tip that has really helped you, please feel free to share. I had a question somewhat related to this, but maybe a little bit of an offshoot. Maybe I'm okay. jumping the gun. Um, it's more about citation. Um, so when folks are ci citing, I mean, this, there's a lot of uh, talk about citing when people are using generative AI. Have you, I, I've seen the sites and the recommendations for how to do it, even in sort of like APA format and whatnot. Um, is this something you're actually seeing in, in literature yet out there actively being done? And does it, do you think that it makes uh, faculty research look weird? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a really interesting question. I don't know about you, Megan. I have not encountered it yet. Uh, and part of that is a little bit related to the literature that I try to keep up with, right? Um, so, you know, I'm seeing a lot of kind of like, um, you know, professional development, webinars, tutorials, and things like that that are about AI, but fewer things that are using it and citing it. I don't know if that's also your experience, Megan. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> but yeah, sorry. Same. And I, I think what I have also seen is that the stuff that is about AI citation tends to be cautionary, which is don't trust the citations that come from AI because they're all hallucinated. But we also have to remember this sort of generative AI is still new. And so that peer review level research has not yet had a chance to percolate its way through. Mm -hmm. um, I'm certain we're about to get slammed with a lot of articles about this, but it's not happened yet. Yeah. And that might just reflect the peer review process, right? Um, the length of time it takes to for stuff to go through. But, you know, obviously this is, is quickly right. developing and, you know, there's a lot of um, pedagogical strategies and things like that that are still in development. So I, I think we're, I think Megan's right. I think we're about to see it, yeah. um, but maybe not yet. Okay. And what, the few things I have seen, particularly when it comes to student use of AI for citations, is they will go into chat GPT and say, hey, find me articles on this. And, you know, they'll get 10 articles, half of them will be real, half of them won't, but they are all at least four years old because back when they were training the free version of ChatGPT, that's the cutoff. Yeah. Now, if you pay for ChatGPT, you're going to get more recent stuff. Um, it's also but, free yeah. on hard, which is up yeah. to them. Um, but, but yeah, that's kind of my question. I mean, especially for faculty that having students do it and recommending, um, <clears throat> citing it. It's like, I just haven't seen it done in the space, you know, um, yet. Uh, so I, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't alone and <laughs> if I was behind the boat or curve or something. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I remember reading an, 
a citation or an article about a medical school attempting to use AI to train medical students and, and found that, that the references concerning the, uh, what the formulas needed to, um, to, uh, to treat patients provided by AI were inaccurate. Uh, right. And so they questioned the, the base, I think someone mentioned the base, maybe Dr. Dr. Megan may mentioned the base source for for the AI calculations. And so they were just testing AI with their with their medical students and, and found the references, uh, found, found the answers to be inaccurate because they had to be verified by the faculty. Yeah. So that's if that's what you're asking, then 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 institutions are validating, especially if they're training doctors and nurses and et cetera, the information provided by AI and they're finding it to be inaccurate. Yeah, so and we so, definitely, so, yeah, at this point, we would not recommend using AI as a quick research <laughs> tip yes, simply right. because it, it's not yet gotten to the level of quality that it needs to be when it comes to research, simply because at this point, um, the amount of material, like you could ask it to develop a literature review or a reading list, but at least half of the information it shares is going to be made up. So that's why, you know, that didn't percolate up as a, you know, top three research tip. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a couple of things that, to add is, you know, one is just, this is also a really interesting opportunity. This gets a little bit afield from the citations and, and, and all that, but this is just a really interesting um, opportunity and time for us to teach a broader literacy concept about the generation of information and how information is used and where it comes from, right? So that that's yeah. sort of one of the things that can come up. Uh, right now. The other thing I'll mention is, you know, we've, we've been talking about generative AI, but there are definitely um, an increasing number of sort of academic AI related tools, um, like Illicit is one I know that um, helps, you know, manage and summarize academic articles, things like that. You know, that's, again, not exactly adjacent to this, but that's another thing that I am seeing a little bit more of in the academic world is that use of, of AI for kind of managing and summarizing sources. Any other questions? Again, please feel free to unmute yourself or drop it in the chat. And if nothing comes in, we will stop the recording in case anyone would like to ask something unrecorded. Uh, it's, uh, um, I don't know how to say it. Well, when I was doing my own doctoral work, I was saving everything the same way you were suggesting. Like I was, everything was, I mean, I did 2016 is when I finished and I did everything uh, Dropbox, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I still have all those files. I find myself recommending that all the time to people. Um, it's, it's, you know, to your point with like illicit and so forth, are there better tools made just for this that you've seen too, other than just the random, whatever place that you save your files? So something we highly recommend, um, and it's a freemium service, is Zotero. It's a citation manager, and um, it is free up to a point. Like at some point, you do run out of space to store PDFs. However, you can store, I have never found someone who has hit the limit on the number of citations they can save. And what is nice about Zotero is that not only does it save all the parts of the citation that you need, and you can add the attachment of the full text items, but you have the ability to add notes and create group libraries. So if you're on a research team, you can share materials in one spot and share your notes with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so that is incredibly useful. And if you download the desktop version, because it is a web and a desktop version, um, you can annotate the PDFs within Zotero itself. And it's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. um, so right. we highly recommend Zotero for that, um, simply because it is designed for research citation management. And there are other research citation managers. Um, RefWorks is one of them. Um, and I'm blanking on the other ones, but those are all paid services, whereas Zotero is a free uh, tool that anyone can download and they have a browser extension. So, you know, you can just do your search in a database and just click save to Zotero and save a bunch of things in one go and then go back to them later. Well, I, I think of both of the, and thank you. I think of those, and I forgot about um, RefWorks, um, <laughs> everything I use. Um, I, I think of those as place to save citations, but I mean, in terms of like something that's there that also saves the actual articles if people are doing that, right? Like, um, am I, am I missing like, is, is there something that combines that? Like, I mean, for me, what I guess what I'm saying is in my Dropbox, I have all the actual articles too, right? So Zotero um, can save those PDFs. Oh, does it? 
Okay, yes. I didn't realize yes. it's that. Okay. okay. Yeah, at, at, up to a certain point, you do run out of oh, space that's for what PDFs. You that's yeah, what you I um, but you you can save the PDF, and if you're willing to pay, and I, it's a nominal fee in comparison yeah. to some Top other things. You yeah. can, you know, gain more space to save all the PDFs. Okay, gotcha. The other thing, this is, you know, not something we included in there, and this is a little, the very librarian thing to say, but, you know, one thing I do try to encourage is just when you are storing stuff, just naming conventions for your files. Right. right? right. I think, I think it's really easy to, to get far afield of that, um, you know, when you're in the midst of working on something, um, and it's hard to take the time to remember to do that, but that's also a, you know, keep your life organized, keep things efficient. I think there's so much inclination now to just, you know, you can do keyword searches, right, on, you know, for on your desktop or whatever, right, to find the thing that you are, you're working on, but, you know, so you don't end up with, you know, draft 45, no, for real this time, dot, <laughs> you know, dot, uh, you know, the word file, um, docx that, you know, those kinds of things I think can go a long way, but I think it's something that, that fewer students are using now. So there's less like right. folder organization on, you know, storage. Right, right, right. And well, what's interesting about Bard too, like Bard automatically defaults to saving anything you want right to Google Docs. Yeah. It, obviously it's Google compatible, but I, I think we're just going to see more and more of the AI kind of stuff doing this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the all-in-one service kind of thing eventually, but, you know, as it comes. If you could spell Satira. It's I like put the, uh, the name in the chat, but I will go ahead and get the link and drop the direct link into the chat. Um, from oh, I see it. Z O P E R. Yeah, yeah I see. Yeah. It. yeah, I didn't see it before. Maybe. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. If you have questions you. about it, we're happy to, you know, do crash courses and things like that in Zotero. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and it's Zotero. Well done. Yeah, Zotero itself also offers a ton of um, resources to learn about. You know, to become a power user of it. Mm -hmm. I, I basically know how to save and organize things, but you can do so much more with it. And what's nice about Zotero is it can help you build your bibliography. It won't do the in-text citations, but you can click, you know, a slew of articles and say, build this in APA 7th for me. And that's useful. I wish it existed when I was a grad student. You can give it <laughs> options to do the basic parenthetical citations. But yeah, I, I think there's so much more, but the documentation is, is really good, I found, with Zotero. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Megan. I'm in Ulysses. Hi. I have a question regarding an issue that I have um, run into. Since my area is not so, it's not an area that is very common at UDC because it's bilingual education. Mm -hmm. Every time that I try to run in uh, any keyword like bilingual teachers, I usually run into papers that have been published in journals that we don't have access to. How should I circumvent that? What should I do? So the UDC library, um, you know, if you ever have a known item you were trying to track down and you run into this issue, there are a couple of ways. You can contact us directly and we might be able to use our Ninja library resources to find it. Or you have the ability to submit an interlibrary loan or ILL request. And I dropped the link to how to do that in the chat. You will need to sign up for an ILL account. It's free. It is through um, your library account, but you do need to sign up for that separately. And this means we will go out and put the request out to the world and a library that has that article can then scan it or give us a PDF copy um, and we can upload it to your ILL account. So, you know, never pay for something. We will find a way to get it to you for free. Um, but there's also, if ILL doesn't work and if contacting a librarian doesn't work, and both of those should work for you, you can always contact the authors directly. Um, most authors retain the rights to share the article that they have written personally. And I have yet to run into an author who isn't happy uh, to send you the PDF directly. So that that's always the last ditch result, but ILL and contacting a librarian, we will help you find that article. Awesome, thank you very much. You're welcome. And we do have instructions on placing an interlibrary loan request in the FAQ section of our website. So if you go to our website on the top bar, there is an option for FAQs. And if you type interlibrary into the search bar, it'll pop right up and walk you through the process. Yeah, and I also dropped the link to the directions in the chat. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and this is also, this is a free service. Um, occasionally a lending library will charge a nominal fee, but that's usually for mailing books and not for sending articles. That is almost always free.
any other questions? Right, not seeing any, I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording and thank you for attending today.